This is like my first ever like proper bout. Bro, I went in there, guns blazing, bro. But after the first round, my energy's gone, bro. <laughs> bro, I said, I, my coach said I went from black to white, bro. My skin just went, <laughs> bro, I was tired. That's a Michael Nothing. Jackson thing. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. <laughs> you get me, bro? <laughs> So, Love in the Flesh, um, as you know, it's a reality TV show on couples that I've never met before. They wanted everything to be on camera. That's good though. Yeah, no, it's Keep good. Keep it authentic. Exactly, because obviously we're not trying to repeat that again, do you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, like you said, it's not going to be authentic. Everything was just rushing through my mind at the time. Well, the first time you get there, you're seeing all these cameras all dotted around you, yeah? and you're thinking, crap, I can't do nothing. You can't even shit, bruv. Because like, obviously there's, there's cameras in the toilets as well. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I'm thinking, nah. So what the guys used to do is they'll put the uh, towels over the cameras in, in the bathroom. They don't watch you, innit? It's simply it's for safety. Every reality TV show has it. What's your process then? Obviously, you've been on Love in the Flesh. We'll yeah, talk about yeah, it in a yeah. bit. <laughs> what are you planning on? You've got a few things coming up as well. Yeah, I've got quite, quite a few things coming up. Obviously, some stuff I can't really talk about. Um, but yeah, no, I've got quite a few things in the pipeline where I'm excited for. Um, obviously, I'm doing a show with my dad as well. I'm taking him on challenges around, um, you know, London and the UK. So What kind of challenges? Pff, madnesses, bro. Like, <laughs> bro, I'm talking stuff that I would be shook of, like bungee jumping, skydiving, all that types. Bro, I don't like hats. Food challenges? Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes, Have you, yes. Wh where's that spicy hot wing place in London? Ooh, so I've done a food challenge, yeah. A couple of good few years ago, one of my mates, he's now a pro boxer. Um, actually, no, I don't know if it was me, Isaac Chamberlain, and um, Shamari, he's now a pro boxer. So we went to Man vs. Food. That's in West London. Can't remember where, but it's in West London. And I did the I did the thirty wing challenge, but it's the buffalo wings, bro. So that's a double jointed one, mm -hmm. brother. If you break it, that means that's two wings now. So really and truly, it's not thirty wings. Bro, it's 60 blood. <laughs> 60 <laughs> wings, bro. I kid you not. Obviously, if you finish it, I think within 30 minutes, you get 50 pounds. You get a top saying, um, I completed the challenge and you get a picture put on the wall. So obviously, Isaac flopped. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? He flopped. I think he done. Uh, no, what did he do? They were I spicy, think, yeah? No, nah, no, nah, we didn't do the spicy They're one. They're not spicy. One of the guys did the spicy ones, five wings. You can't, you can't, um, you can't touch your face. You can't wipe, no sweat. You can't drink anything. Do you have to wear gloves? You gotta wear gloves, bro. Yeah. It comes in a, like a metal case, yeah? And a guy wears like a hazard suit, biohazard. I'm like, bro, forget that. If a man's walking into the shop mm -hmm. with a biohazard <laughs> suit, forget about it, blood. Forget it. So one of the guys done that. <laughs> bro, he had two wings, yeah? <laughs> he had two wings. <laughs> he, he, dashed the, he dashed the wing. <laughs> He ran into the toilet, bro. He was there for an hour, bro. No. <laughs> he was there for long. We were worried. I uh. said, yeah, I'm not doing that. Forget that. Mine, I'd done a 30 wing challenge and I had, it got to the point where it's covered in um, barbecue sauce. Bro, after the 10th wing, your jaw starts to hurt, yeah? And the barbecue sauce starts to get hard. It is the hardest thing to do. I, I think I won with like three seconds left to spare. Three seconds, bro. Wow. But that's only because I didn't want to pay the 50 pounds. If you lose, <laughs> <laughs> if you lose, you have to pay 50 pounds. I said, nah, forget that. And then yeah, Isaac lost as well. So yeah, boy, I think it was me, myself and um, Shamari, we won. And obviously the rest of them had to pay 50 pounds, bro. I said, I'm not doing that. I didn't come in to pay 50 pounds. Have you ever seen any of the competitive eaters on YouTube? Yeah, Have you seen man. Beard Meets Food? Have you heard that oh, guy? Oh, my days, yes. Mate. Oh, they're mad. <laughs> They're mad, bro. It is crazy, especially in America. Like mm. they're, they're eating like eight pounds of food. One of them, they had fourteen pounds of poutine. I think it's Canadian, right? So it's yeah. like uh, potato and cheese. I nah, think. nah, that's too fourteen much carbs. pounds. So fourteen, six kilos, maybe six yeah. kilos. Myth, miss me, miss me with that, bro. I can't do that. That's mad. Would your dad be able to do that? <laughs> oh, would he give it a go? Do you know what? <laughs> what did I? I took him to do um, the sausage. Hot dog challenge, yeah. <laughs> what is that? It's like a massive hot dog. It's got chili con carne all over it. So they make it as hard as possible. Yeah, it was that one or the ice cream challenge. So I took my dad and one of my boys, Marcus, yeah. Obviously the ice cream one, they gave him like a teaspoon and a massive tub and it was frozen. 
Oh god, bro. What well, and they ever. start? Did they start the timer from then as yeah, well? Yeah, the minute you dig it in, they start the timer. My dad flopped. Like he couldn't, he couldn't finish it. I think he went what just about halfway, and after that, yeah, he just like he gave in, bruv. It's too, he can't do it. But I don't know how people are able to finish that because your stomach is small, bro. And dairy as well. I think if you consume too much dairy, you will throw up. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I ate a, a, a Brazilian death pepper, I think it was called. When I After school one day, we thought it was funny. We was oh, in man. one of those like, little, do you know you get like the little corner shops yeah, that yeah, sell everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they, yeah, they had, yeah. we said, what's your spiciest pepper? So they, they're like, they went out back. They had like mm. all this little tub of whatever. They had like um, the ghost chili peppers yeah. and these green ones. And uh, I had a the bite. The ghost chili peppers as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so ghost chili peppers. Um, we did that another time. My mate bought some into school. Matt, he, he nearly got excluded because he gave one to a year seven <laughs> <laughs> at break. <laughs> and the year seven, I think he went to the hospital. Oh, I think, oh. Just because you know, he was in not, tears. That's not funny. Yeah, bro. it was horrendous. Like, it, it went from funny <laughs> to... <laughs> I hope he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got quite a funny story as well. No, go on. I was hated in year seven by Is sick by come? sick formers. Um, I fell off my bike <laughs> <laughs> in the car park. Mm. Uh, we used to ride our bikes to school. There yeah, was like, yeah. I don't know, seven, eight of us. And I remember we were bombing it down the car park in the mm. morning. I think we were running late or whatever, <laughs> hanging around the shops. Um, and I went into the back of mm. someone's bike under their tire, flew over my handlebars, hit a car. I think I'm pretty sure I was out cold. Maybe I can't. I can't really remember. Anyway, I woke up in an ambulance. I'm pretty sure huh? this. This is you know. This huh? is like ten years ago now Mad. or longer. Mad. Um, but it turns out because of they had no barriers mm. in the car park, um, they then put them up like the next day because of they were worried about yeah, like, my safety. Yeah. <laughs> so six formers weren't allowed to drive in there anymore. Oh. <laughs> So that everyone knew me is this little scrawny year seven with the big blazer over my hand. Typical. Um, I would have been pissed, man. Pissed. <laughs> if you were the cause of that, what? I would have taken your lunch money every day, bro. Yeah. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have any lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a madness, bro. So let's talk about loving the flesh. Yeah, Can man. you explain to everyone, people that haven't seen it, the reality TV, sh- TV cool. show from, yeah. from start to finish? Cool. So, Love in the Flesh, um, as you know, it's a reality TV show on couples that I've never met before. So, rather than obviously Love Island, they get in there and obviously they meet their partners or whatever. For us, we we know our partners from beforehand. And um, it's like you meet for the first time of the first, you have your first date of a lifetime, basically. Do you know what I mean? So, you've never seen, you've been speaking for however many years. Online. 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 Strictly online. Wherever apps it is, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Dating apps. If you use dating apps, use dating apps. Stuff like that. And, Grinder. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bumble. <laughs> Listen, I don't use dating apps like that. And it, you get me. Uh, but um, obviously, Instagram is mad because obviously I feel like Instagram's a dating app now because obviously you might see a girl's picture, like it, follow her. If she follows you back, you lot start DMing. But anyway, yeah. So I think the longest uh, cup talking couple was myself and um, Jessica. Um, the rest of them were maybe like two years, couple of months, etc. So we were the first. So it was, it was kind of, it was emotional. I'm not gonna lie. How long were you talking with her for? Five, about five years. Five years. Yeah, but and you never met. Nah, bro. But you know, it's again between that period. Yeah, I weren't really. It weren't a thing where let's say we're completely talking for five years because she was in a relationship, I was in a relationship as well. So there was pockets of times where we never spoke. Do you know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, pockets of time we never spoke. Where obviously, yeah, she was in a relationship. I was in a relationship. So then, we're friends. Like, if anything, we're friends more time. Um, Flirted a bit here and there. And then, yeah, so got hit up. Obviously, opportunity to go to a beautiful Greek Greek island, Cyprus. And I thought, yeah, why not, man? You know, it would be nice. Catch a bit of tan. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Golden. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And then, yeah, man. So from there, that's when, do you know what? When I first got to the island, though, we weren't allowed to see anyone. Yeah, so I, I was, we were isolating for about a couple of days, a few days, and then um, we weren't allowed to, you know, go out. So when I went out for my walks and stuff, yeah, they would have to all run out, check to see if there's anyone out there. I felt like a superstar, bro. It was mad. Check to see if anyone was there or any other um, contestants as well. And I'll go for my like my thirty minute walk or run or whatever, and then come back. Did you know who was going to be there? Nah, bro. I didn't know anything. Like, literally, I wanted to try and peep out my balcony to see if I can see any of the guys, any of the lads and stuff. I didn't see no one, bro. And then um, the only time I got to see one of the one of the boys was when we were being transported to 
the island, the villa, the beach house. Um, one of the boys was on my bus, but they told us we can't speak to each other. So you can look, nod, and carry on, bruv. So literally, he had he had his glasses on. Brandon, that's my boy. Yeah, he was at the back of the bus. He's a hench guy, bruv, from Sheffield, bruv. So um, he had his glasses on, nod, nodded, got to the um the waiting area, and then we were just chopping up, but we couldn't talk about anything. Only thing we could talk about was football, and maybe pets, because they wanted everything to be on camera. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So obviously got onto the speedboat. That's good though. Yeah, no, it's Keep good. Keep it authentic. Cause, exactly, because obviously I think their fear was if we speak, yeah, then there's nothing. We don't really have anything else to talk about in the villa, or every single important thing that's spoken about. Obviously, we're not trying to repeat that again. Do you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, like you said, it's not going to be authentic. So, obviously, got into the speedboat, got to the villa, bro. I see a massive camera. Yeah. Lord God. Massive camera just zooming into my face. I'm like, rah. Bare cameras. And I see Jess on, on the little dock, the little dock thing. And I was like, rah, okay. And you'd never seen her before? Never seen her, bro. Literally. Remember, I don't really FaceTime as well. But obviously, I've seen her on Instagram, so I know what she looks like. But, you know, sometimes people look different in real life. Yeah, so I was like, rah, mad ting. And then I'm seeing the rest of them just all huddled up in the villa. I'm like, rah, this is real, bruv. Like, all this time I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's going to be like a little, maybe a couple iPhone cameras, mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple MIDI cameras and that. Bro, those big boy cameras, bro. What was the emotions coming in there? It was time? mad still. I can't lie. Do you know what I was shaking? Because I was like, rah, this is actually happening. Like, damn, I can't turn back. I can't turn back now. If I wanted to go back to England, I can't. Madness so. I was going through a whole heap of emotions where I'm like, cool, I'm here now, meeting her now. What's it going to be like? How are we going to gel, etc. Everything was just rushing through my, my, my mind at the time. So I'm like, nah, this is just mad, bruv. So well, I was got, trying to look calm and confident. Yeah, bro, because I'm a big boy, you get me? <laughs> so obviously I'm trying to be as cool, calm and collected as I can be. But yeah, man, that will flew out the window, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, man. And he's walked up and then, yeah. The journey began, bruv. Literally, man. So it was, it was a good, it was a good start to it, because just seeing all the other contestants as well, and just you know, obviously we built friendships. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, man, I loved it, man. What was the first day like when you're meeting everyone? Mm. Was it? Did you feel there was a lot after you started to know them a bit more? Yeah. Was there a lot of fakeness on the first day, maybe, where people were trying to be liked, or mm. was everyone quite genuine? Do you know what? I feel like everyone was calm, um, because no one tried to fake it. Because everyone was in their couples and stuff. So, um, you know, saying cool to everyone. And I'm I'm quiet. I'm the type of person, yeah, that once I meet you, I can't be fake, innit? If you give off any type of fake energy, I'm going I'm to stay away from you. But no one did that. Everyone was actually cool and genuine. So for me, that was good. Because now I don't have to pretend. Mm -hmm. I don't like pretending. And you'll get caught out at some exactly, point anyway. Exactly, exactly. You'll see it on my face. Like, bro, I can't hide it. So it was good. Um, the only thing that bothered me was obviously everyone was in their couple. So I tried to, you know, speak to Jess, but obviously she was going through some stuff, but I didn't know. So but she didn't really want to talk. So for me, I'm like, what? So I was like, okay, cool. Um, obviously, I, I didn't say this to people, but obviously that bothered me at, at the time. It's like, cool. I'm going to give it like three strikes, three strikes, yeah. Well, you're on a, you're on a TV show yeah. where you're going to be with her exactly. and she can't talk to you. Exactly. So for me, it was mad. But obviously we spoke and stuff and she told me she was going through some stuff. And yeah, fair enough, do you know what I mean? But I think for us, the lack of communication was what didn't help us at the beginning. But yeah, man. And were other couples there that was you sort of seeing everyone else were probably getting on really well and you yeah, were like, Oh bruv. god, here I am. Oh, and I'm just days. I'm just trying to like pluck blood out of a stone. Literally, bro. I'm thinking, I'm looking around, I'm like, nah, everyone's all together, you know, hugging, cuddling, whatever, and I'm just there. <laughs> Shadow boxing on a beach. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I love doing that in the water, bro. I was like, get me, nah, I love that. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm like, but Again, I was like, what? So she told me to go get to know other people, innit? So I'm like, what do you mean go get to know? But well, like, she, what, other guys, girls? Yeah, like, she, <laughs> like, but obviously she told me that she meant go speak to other people, make friends, innit? Uh, okay. But bro, like, uh, I, I would have took that the wrong way. Exactly. I'm thinking, what do you mean? So at the back of my mind, I'm like, so you want me to go and move to other people? What? 
first of all, everyone's in their couples. For now. Yeah, for now. <laughs> exactly, you know what I'm saying? So why am I now going to ruin that on the first day? I'm not trying to be hated. Do you know what I mean? So that was my thing. And also, I'm guessing your morals anyway. You're not, you're exactly. not going to go up to someone that's been chatting with a girl and then try it on them. Exactly, exactly. I'm not about to do that. I don't like because if it happened to me, we're going to have a big problem. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not trying to make any enemies or what or anything like that. So yeah, man. How, how long were you in there for? Ooh. So do you know what? I, was, I think I was in Greece for a total of probably like three weeks, but we only filmed for about 10 days. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I think, no, seven days. It was meant to be longer, but I think the format of the show was, I think about eight episodes or seven episodes. So we were filming, yeah, every day. And I think the rest of it was just like, um, you know, press, etc. But yeah, so we filmed, filmed for about seven days, which was mad. But they like challenges and stuff. Yeah, they? bro. So what were you getting up to? All right, the challenges were cold, I can't lie. So the best one was we had to build a raft. Yeah. Um, to see how strong you and your couple are in terms of communication and stuff. So we had to build a raft. Our raft was cold, I'm not gonna lie. Me and Jessica's raft was cold, but we didn't win. It was a hard one because <laughs> she had to be blindfolded and had to direct her. So as she was doing whatever, but it was mad, bro. Like rafts were just colliding, sinking, people were cheating. Bro, it was manic, bruv. <laughs> But yeah, man, it was sick. Building a raft it was, it was a sick challenge still. I'd love to do it again. If we can get the man in together and be like, yo, boys, we're going to Lake District. We're about to do a team building activity, bruv. Me, you, Alex, this and we're all going. And we'll do it, man. But yeah, it was cold. Challenge was cold, man. What was the hardest parts of all of that? Having the cameras in your face and everything? Ooh, the hardest parts. Yeah, I had to kind of get used to that. But after a while, you kind of forget they're there. So the first time you get there, you see, you're seeing all these cameras all dotted around, yeah? And you're thinking, crap, I can't do nothing. You can't even shit, bruv. Like, because obviously there's, there's cameras in the toilets as well. <laughs> I'm like, what? So I'm thinking, nah. So what the guys used to do is they'll put the uh, towels over the cameras in, in the bathroom. Because obviously, bro, if I'm going to shit, they don't watch you, innit? It's simply it's for safety. Every reality TV show has it. So in case there's a fire or whatever, or emergency, mm-hmm. they need to have a look at all the cameras and see where everyone's at. So I get that. But at the Just back you of your scrolling mind, on Instagram bro, on like, the toilet. <laughs> Were you allowed phones? That's another thing. We weren't allowed phones. Mm. That was mad. Because obviously, you in in the villa, like everything is um, on steroids. And it? it's like, you're in there for a week, but you feel like you've been there for months, bruv. Because obviously, you're with this person day in, day out, trying to get to know them. You're sleeping with them, waking up with them, going to get breakfast and that with them. So everything is just fast-tracked is mad. So yeah, you ain't got no phones, so had no track of time. So you only know about the time when the lights go off and when the lights come on. So when the lights come on, it means cool. It's probably like nine or 10 or whatever. And you get ready for the day. And when the lights go off, it's just bedtime, innit? Do you know what I'm saying? So not having a phone, to be fair, was good because you get to block out, you know, the world, you know, you just get to be in the moment. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where as humans, we forget that whenever we travel and stuff, we're always on our phones. Going out to dinner, you're scrolling through your phone. Bro, it weren't like that before, do you know what I'm saying? So it was good to not have the phones. It was hard not to speak to friends and family, but you know, not having the phones was, in a way, it was good. Do you know what I mean? You get to concentrate on the now. And then, yeah, man. Sick. And when yeah. you come out then, how was the relationship with Jessica? Um, do you know, when we come out, obviously, we, we had a date. Obviously, the BBC took us on a date, um, which was good. Oh, oh so well. this was like a coming out show thing? Yeah, they yeah. Film you. Yeah, exactly. So we had a date, which was really good. But after that, we never really... We spoke every now and again, but we never really... Like, we obviously decided to be friends, it. So rather be friends than um, anything, because um, we've had, like, five years of friendship. So rather than just ruin that, we decided to be friends and stuff. So, yeah, man. And cool. was there anyone else on the show that actually got together still with each yeah, other? Yeah, bruv. Um, so there's a couple that my guys in it. Chazelle and Chibs, that they've actually got a baby now. Oh wow! Mad in it, mad bro. Trust me, bro. Everyone would like this was only aired this yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust me, bro. They're Trust quick. me, quick man. But do you know what? Them two were proper into each other, innit? Mm. So it was nice to see and like, um, yeah, just to see like a love in the flesh baby. 
Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the first one. <laughs> the first one, bro. Now, to be fair, there's two. There's two. Obviously, Lauren as well. She's got. A, she's got a baby as well. But obviously, the guy's not from the show. So obviously, the Love and Flesh baby main one is obviously Shizelle and Chibs, bruv. So it's good to see them together. They're doing things together. We're gonna try and do some content together as well. Um, do some filming and some stuff, man, which will be good. But yeah, now nah, they're doing bits, man. And are you still in contact with all of them now? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I speak to speak to pretty much everyone every now and again. But the main ones I do speak to would be Shazelle and Chips. Um, obviously, my boy on the show was Brandon. I need to link up with him, bruv. Because obviously, that was like my guy. Yeah, when, when, obviously, when he left, yeah, obviously, he got kicked out of the show. Oh, you get kicked out, did yeah, you? Yeah, bro. So literally, so when he got, bro, I was sad. I'm like, nah, that's my guy, bro. Why did he get kicked out? Um, obviously, you have to find meaningful connections mm-hmm. you know, in, in the villa. So when that's not happening, but we didn't know this. Mm-hmm. So it was a shock when they said, oh, yeah, Brandon's not coming back. I was like, what? But you said you didn't have a meaningful connection. At the beginning. Oh, yeah, okay. Beginning. So it, it got yeah, better than got, Yeah, it got, yeah. As, as obviously the days were carrying on, we actually communicated better. And obviously we got together and stuff. So yeah, it worked out during that, obviously, the time. It progressed. But yeah, um, Brandon, <laughs> Brandon's a funny guy. <laughs> for me personally, I'm like, he was just there for a holiday, bro. It was so hilarious, bro. <laughs> he's a funny guy, but and he's so honest as well. <laughs> he's mad honest, bro. If you watched, um, there's a bit where I think Hannah, I love Hannah as well. Them two are the couple, yeah. Hannah must have been like, ah. Oh. So what did she say again? She said something about, oh, so something about, so you don't care about me and the girls. Nah. <laughs> I was like, nah. <laughs> don't quote me on that, but that's not exactly what she said, but it was something similar. And he paused for like 10 seconds and went, nah. <laughs> I was like, nah. On a show on called, this show, called bro. Love in the Flesh. Bro. Love in the Flesh. <laughs> <laughs> bro, Brandon is, he's the funniest guy you would meet, bro. And he don't, he's not trying. Mm-hmm. He just does it, bro. It's... <laughs> I like his honesty. It's bro, needed. It's, bro, it's point blank, just blunt he, says, mm. he just looked at her and went nah <laughs> I'm like nah bro he would not last in America bro Woo! he would not last out there they Woo! they don't like the the straight to the point type they, of yeah, stuff they, they, they want to be around the bush every time exactly exactly do you know what I would love to see him on the <laughs> actually it, it could work it, it could you know <laughs> I'd love to see him on another show, bro, because he is the funniest guy, bro. Listen, the Sheffield muscle, bro. That's what I call him, where <laughs> that's my guy, man. But yeah, man, it was a, it was a good experience. I enjoyed it. Um, I would definitely, if I could recommend anyone to do something filming-wise, trust me, it will get, get, get you out of your comfort zone, get you doing stuff that you you wouldn't normally do. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just, you know, brings out your character. People can see your personality as well. You don't have to hide it. You don't have to fake anything. Did and, you feel yeah. like you grew a bit as well in there yourself? Yeah. You probably, you probably realise a lot of self-realisation of just how you actually are. Because you, you're stuck with no phones and you're probably analysing every situation as well. 100%. 100%. I like to think I'm good at um, analysing people and knowing what, they're, knowing what they want. But I'm not bloody sure I didn't, bro. Because <laughs> obviously... Um, Obviously, I think a lot of people didn't want to step on people's toes as well. So whereas someone might have liked, someone might have liked me or I, I might have liked someone, you're thinking they're in a happy couple. So you wouldn't want to go and, go and disturb that. Whereas if, um, obviously in reality, I'll be like, okay, cool, you don't really like the person, obviously, but I'm not going to step on the person's toes. Mm-hmm. If you come up to me and say something, then, you know, can give it a shot. So on the show... I think a lot of things could have gone haywire if people were like, nah, let me get to know this person and actually approached the person and said, look, boom, I kind of like you. Let's get, you know, let's try it. Did that happen at all? It, do you know what? It kind of did and it didn't. But I was very oblivious to a lot of things in it. So a lot of conversation that was going on, I didn't know what was going on. Until you watched it back. Yeah, and I was like, rah, what? You was thinking this? I can't lie, those parts as well that made me laugh, yeah, where... For example, I was chatting to one one of the one of the cast members, and then I was telling them I was like, "Oh yeah, I had a good night with like Jess. Obviously, we held hands. This was after we had beef. So obviously, we had a first date, and I told her, "Yeah, let's be friends in it. Yeah, and I think the next night, obviously, we got a bit close. Yeah, so obviously, anyone would be confused in it. Obviously, as we were sleeping, we got a bit closer, and obviously, we held hands and stuff. But when I said that. Obviously, I said that in it, and then obviously she was having a completely different conversation with someone else, saying, "Ah, oh, don't get Kwame, like, 
one thing, one, obviously, first he's telling me that we're friends, next minute he's holding my hands. I was like, uh. rah, <laughs> rah. Oh, no. If this was going on, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's funny as well to see people's perspective on things as well. Like, rah, what I could be thinking is not what someone else is thinking, which is mad. So true. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? So there's two sides of every story in it. So if, to me, it was funny. I was like, rah, this is jokes. And but, your, your identity going in there, obviously mm. you was an entrepreneur, yeah. a boxer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was that Come like on. the main things that people understood of you when they, when yeah. they saw Kwame? Was that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, obviously I'm a boxer and obviously an entre entrepreneur. So I think, Obviously, people asked questions like, what do you do and stuff? And obviously, that's when they got to realise, okay, this is what I do for work and um, this is my hobby and sport that I like to do. So I feel like they got to know me a lot a lot more. I don't think on camera the audience would have seen that because that wasn't spoken about a lot. Because obviously, we have to talk about obviously relationships and stuff. But maybe if... Because um, I, I think people might have obviously got the wrong impression about me. They might have thought I might have played Jess which I didn't because obviously the way I was moving, but I had every reason to move like that because obviously a lot of stuff that obviously was, wasn't was shown on camera as to obviously why my behaviour was the way it was. Do you know what I mean? Those conversations had outside that, for example, um, when they said I fell asleep in the first very first episode. I only done that, yeah, simply because I asked Jess, yeah, to come closer in it. Because obviously I'm seeing all the couples together. So I thought it come closer under, underneath the blanket. And she said, nah. So I was like, all right, cool. So I just went to bed, bruv. I was tired. Mm -hmm. bro, I've been out. I've been up all day. Yeah. Getting ready to come into the into the, um, into the the beach house. And you're telling me no. Okay, cool. Fair enough. I'll go to bed. Yeah, quite a bad start really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah. Cause also, you've, you've been caught sleeping a few times. We got, we got photos of you sleeping everywhere. There's... Bro, I sleep, exactly. You know what I'm bro, I sleep everywhere, bro. So it ain't even a thing. <laughs> Alex has got bare pictures of me, bro. I've in got Miami a few of my phone. That. Swear down. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you don't need to allow me. He's got enough on the plane. I was gone. Lips hanging. Teeth. Hey, this is nuts. I've actually got more of Alex though. So, oh, good. I need it for his birthday next year. Next year, bro, I'm going to post everywhere. I'll send them to you after this. P please do. Please do. Before we go any further in the podcast, I would just like to thank the proud sponsors of Not Just Boxing. Not Just Boxing is proudly sponsored by Titan Boxing. Titan Boxing is a UK fast-growing boxing business. They do personalised gloves, pads, T-shirts, everything. They've got UK free shipping. Go check them out with the link on screen. Gymfluencers.com are proud sponsors of Not Just Boxing. They are the premier health and fitness website. There you can find supplement discount codes, freebies, giveaways, a macro calculator. There's all sorts on there. So go check them out at gymfluencers.com or check out their at on Instagram at gymfluencers.official. Let's talk about Miami, man. That was, so we met we at the airport. Was it the airport we met? Yes. Wait, was it? At Heathrow? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we yeah. boxed in Miami, flew out... Probably like a Friday morning or whatever, freezing yeah. cold. Cold. It's like we time travelled. Because what, we left, what, in the morning and got there in the morning. Something mm -hmm. mad. It was mad. But we left, it was freezing cold. Mm -hmm. We landed in, what, blistering heat, bruv. Oh, it's lovely. Mad. Well, everyone had jumpers because it was January. Everyone yeah. had jumpers on. We was like, we was in our swimming chunks, <laughs> tops off. It's like For 16 real. degrees. You, you could see For we were real. British. For real, bro. <laughs> literally, bruv. Literally. Imagine flying out from a cold-ass country. You land, everyone's in what, flipping batty riders and shorts, bruv. And you see a whole bunch of lads wearing what, puffer jackets, <laughs> jumpers and flipping woolly hats and that. We're but, down the uh, beach every day. I had a pair of swimming trunks on every day, man. <laughs> but that was so good. That, that was, was lit, man. It was that, such a sick holiday. Such a sick holiday. Who couldn't get into the club again? Was it you? Yeah, it was I, was, you. I was only 20. You messed it yeah. for us, bruv. Oh my God. I, I was dear. allowed in some. Because they yeah. couldn't read the ID properly because yeah. they obviously didn't go to school, some of these guys. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was a few that I couldn't get let into. It was a it's so mad, We bro. ended up, so after we all had our fights that yeah. night out, yeah, 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 we yeah. ended up in the first place, I'm pretty sure. It, it was ended up being a strip club. I didn't even know. We walked in and I walked straight back out. I saw <laughs> <laughs> I saw in there, it's like obviously all the women on poles and that, but there were guys with what? their handguns on tables and wads of money. It, no. it was madness. It was mad. I was like, Wait, what nope. was this? I, I went with you though. Who was you with? Um, so I was with Matt Dunn, oh, okay, yeah, Terry, yeah. Uh, Aaron. I oh, yeah. Aaron, Aaron yeah, might yeah, have been yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but uh, yeah, Aaron, Coach Aaron. Yeah, co- oh, Coach Aaron. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Um, I thought you meant okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah. a crazy night. That's mad. <laughs> Being up in a Wendy's at four in the morning, just loads of crackheads, just like just. That's where they go. <laughs> yeah, that's at mad. that time. Yeah, just, just watching them do their thing is. That's mad. Must the strip club. Why would have been there, boy? <laughs> what? He dumb. <laughs> Splashing the bread I did not have. <laughs> Seeing all of the guns in that though, I just like, no. Nah. nah, it was intimidating. No, hundred percent. That reminds me. Um, I remember when I was walking to because I went to a shisha spot. So not shisha spot, a sushi bar. And um, literally, I was walking by, and I think the policeman, the policeman stopped me, and I was just talking. And I, bro, I looked at his hip saw a gun I said oh my days this shit is real bro this is mad and you can buy bloody guns in like flower stores and mm-hmm. what and Walmart yeah. Walmart what you can go heck? get yourself some red vine sweets and a, and and a, a shotgun gun. yeah what on the side <laughs> yeah. jolting bruv that's mad what a trip though all no, the gyms we went to I yeah, thought man. meeting Luke Campbell his story yeah that was yeah. insane yeah, and, no, that's true, man. The it's amount true. of stuff that he'd gone through. Mm. Do you remember he said in the amateurs he lost like his first five fights? Yeah, 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 yeah. For real. I think that's what motivated obviously Dunn was obviously Dunn, obviously I can't remember his record and that. But um yeah, we was just literally just talking about that because obviously I think he had a bad start. So literally just talking that was it was really good to hear. For him, for obviously with Luke's story from where he started to where he's at is nuts, bro. That means that anyone can do it. If you really want to do it, you can. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And what's mad is, you remember Tio Fimo? Yes. That's mad, you know. I, I didn't even know it was him. You didn't know? No, not really. Is it? Well, because you could see someone thought they were special. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah, could, yeah, you, yeah. you feel the presence of someone mm. when you know they're like, they're, they're something. doing something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I, to be honest, it was, we were fighting anyway. Like the last, last thing on my mind was that. Because also, I didn't even know if I was going to be competing. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? For real, you know. Yeah, for My real. guy weighed in 12 kilos over. Blood clad. <laughs> well, Alex's guy. Oh, yeah, bruv. Alex was fighting a heavyweight. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. So, like, yeah. just, just have an exhibition and you just see Alex just piece him up. Literally, bruv. Yeah. Alex was, what, 60? He was struggling to, to make weight as well, you know? Because he was on the plane. Because I flew, obviously, I was sitting next to Alex. Mm-hmm. I was I could eat anything. I lose weight. When I want to lose weight, I can lose weight in it. But Alex was worried. He goes, ah, oh, do you think I should eat the bread? I'm like, eat the bread, man. He mm-hmm. goes, nah, but my body works differently the way. I'm like, just eat the bread, bro. He's always had weight problems, isn't he? Always. For him, it's harder to lose weight for some reason because he boxes at 64. Mm-hmm. So for him to lose the weight, it is hard. But I'm like, I'm boxing at 69, so I can I can kind of eat and I'll just run it off or sweat off. But mm-hmm. for him, yeah, it's just, he says his body holds water a lot more than others in it. So, yeah, that was his problem, bruv. Yeah. But yeah, man. Seeing T.O. though was, was lit. Yeah. I, I remember the night before, mm. we was all out for dinner on, on the Miami seafront. Yeah, Do you yeah, remember? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was yeah, I got a picture of that, actually. I ordered a prawn salad. Mm. I had three poxy prawns <laughs> on a, a bed of lettuce for like $25. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't even drink my water because I was worried about my weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get the phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hangs up and Connor's like, Ash, mate, you guys 12 kilos overweight. <laughs> and I'm just sat there eating this sad, expensive 12. prawn salad, <laughs> free prawns for like 20 quid. And it was heartbreaking. Everyone everyone was just tucking in anyway. No, no, no one really gave a shit. And I was just like, brilliant. Oh, man. I've come all the way to Miami. We've trained all week. We were ready. I've been dieting. I got, you know, I got sly tackled hard in, in football that day at the beach. Oh, yeah. yeah Connor was going off. Oh, Connor own. was going hard. Bro. Connor's a madman, you know. Connor's Can a you ma- madman. Your own boxing coach. <laughs> Is taking you out with a two-footed challenge. He came in like <laughs> the day before a fight. <laughs> hey, Connor's a madman. Uh, I can't believe he's done that. I'm thinking about it now. Connor's nuts. The day before we boxed, you come in two-footed, and he came in with vengeance as well. You know. I, <laughs> I remember a really funny part of that hey. football game. He was through on goal. Yeah. <laughs> no one was there. It was an open goal. Yeah. He went to kick the ball. <laughs> And he fell over. The ball didn't even kick it. Collapsed. Missed the open goal. And just got back up and shrugged it off. And mate, it was the funniest me, thing. Bro. You're going to kill me, bro. My stomach. Uh, oh, my stomach, bro. My, my jaw's bloody hurting now. Uh, oh, my gosh. No, but man, that, was, that whole trip, was, for that for that point, it was amazing. It was but too lit, bro. To be told that I couldn't, couldn't then fight. Yeah, yeah, I'd have been devastated. Yeah, but then obviously on the day... Mm. We luckily switched up where I had Alex's guy yeah. and uh, 
and yeah. he had him. And you boxed very bloody well, bro. I kept it simple, to be that honest. Was, that was sick, bro. Like uh, Just straight shots. Simplicity is key, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Nice like, everyone, the basics. Because we thought, because I think the people talking about my man, what he, um, he's my guy as well. Shout out to him. They're all great. Yeah, they're, I still lit. talk to them now. They're, they're yeah, no, legit, same man, same man, man. Proper sick guys. Apart from obviously my opponent, I had him on Facebook, but I don't. I ain't been on Facebook in years. But he was cool. But I remember when I first saw him, I was thinking this guy is a hench, bruv. Mm-hmm. He came in like one African warrior, bro. I was thinking, <laughs> no, he's going to be doing a manners. But I had a straight face. I'm like, yeah, this is light. But in my head, I'm thinking, yo, <laughs> if he lands a blow, yeah, I might be back in England, bro. I might wake up, you don't mind taking me back. I'm like, I tell you what, when I saw him, <laughs> I was just like, I'm so glad. <laughs> I remember I'm, you told me I'm as well. I'm so glad that's not my guy. <laughs> you told me before I got into the ring, bruv. How the, bro? Uh, well, no, it's obviously, uh, we're going to back you anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, before all of this, mm. I knew of you through Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Luke said he was Shout meant to meet Luke. you. Yeah, he yeah. said he was meant to meet you in... Um, the, yeah, the, the Bucks. Yeah, Bucks Championships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he he obviously spoke so highly of you. Yeah, and guy, um, you know. yeah, seeing you box before you got in, I, I'd seen you obviously during the week and stuff. Yeah. I didn't know how you were going to fight. Yeah, but that was fight of the night. Oh, I love man. I appreciate that, bro. That was unreal because especially that. where you had such a good opposition. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was he never lost. It's mad. He never lost. He never lost, bro. Oh, okay. And he was a champ till then. Yeah, till then. Yeah, <laughs> come on. The, the old taker. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but that, like, mm. it brought the best out in you, probably. Yeah, no, it did. It did because, um, because I was thinking to myself. Obviously, Connor was saying that um, they were looking forward to it because obviously it was a pretty good matchup in terms of styles and stuff. So I was thinking, damn, what's he gonna do? Because he had muscles on muscles, bro. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, oh my gosh, all right, cool. So for me, getting in there, I was thinking. Okay, cool. I'm probably quicker than him. So I'm going to have to use that to my advantage. But yeah, no, it was very fun, bro. But I did feel there's a couple blows he threw, yeah, that missed. And I felt the force. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if this connected, bruv, it would be a different fight in it. Like, I would have to, I wouldn't go down, but I would know to stay the hell away. I still stay the hell away from his punch, like his hefty punches, but bro. Out of in the madness. Did he catch you clean at any point? No, nah, he didn't, which was good. Yeah. Which is good. Because um, if he did, yeah, it'll be a different fight. I think that forces me to fight. And sometimes I don't need to fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that would have forced me to fight. Because I'm like, nah, if you land a good shot on me, I need to land one back. That's just how I'm that's just how I think. I wouldn't think, okay, logically, okay, okay, cool. Let me move away and just box. I'll think to just go ham. And I might not be the best, you know, best thing to do, bruv. So yeah, man. Yeah, I remember parts of your fight. Set off a combination, yeah. move straight off and go for a second phase. And yeah, it was just natural. You? Yeah, man. Whereas with me, I'm still where I'm a novice. Mm. I was sort of throwing my shots, moving off, and then I was just out of range. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't flowing. But your mm. fight the whole way through, it was just bro, all appreciate action. That, man. It was all action. It was, uh, that, bro. it was, it was, it was a sick fight. It was a sick night. Nah, it was a sick trip, bro. Mm-hmm. The whole thing. To fly to Miami... You lot go see strippers and <laughs> <laughs> oh, you box, bro. We saw what? We saw um, David Hay. Mm-hmm. We saw David Hay, Luke Campbell. Was that when he was training for the second belly yes, fight? Yes, second. second belly fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's mad. Come mm-hmm. to think of it, you know. And he was nice in person. Yeah. Wasn't he? I yeah, see a lot was. of people give him stick because on camera he mm. can be a bit of an idiot, really. Yeah, exa- yeah exactly. But he was actually a sound guy. Mm-hmm. We saw another boxer as well. He's an American guy. He was in one of the Creed movies as well. Can't remember his name. Who was the blonde Justin Bieber looking guy that was there? And we, we saw some good Cubans in um yeah. oh. in the gym. There, there was it was so much talent in Do there. you know what's mad? You see the blonde um the one that we saw at Luke Campbell's gym, right? Yeah, Justin Bieber looking guy. Yeah, him. Mm-hmm. Bruv, imagine last year he turned up at my gym in London. No way. Bro, and I was like, this guy looks bare familiar. Because mm-hmm. remember the coach, mm-hmm. the Cuban coach? Yeah. He came down. And I was like, oh, you probably don't remember me, but we came to your, I came to your gym years ago in Miami. And he goes, oh, yeah. And I said, oh, so how's the kid? Because the kid was like 15 and he was, mm-hmm. was he 15? He was young. He was young. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I said, that, that kid was very good. He goes, yeah, that's him. I said, what? Bro, the kid is tall, mm-hmm. solid. Solid, bro. He, he, had, he was like a Ryan Garcia build. Yes. Very, exa- very quick. Ex- bro, he's, he's way better now. It is crazy, bro. But he looked good back then, to be honest. Exactly. He had a hat. Turn back, you were mm. just on the bags, and he was, he was young, but I think what, 16 or something, 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 something stupid. But yeah, bro, now solid. 
where he come down to my gym. He was training at my gym for for a while. He was um he was Isaac's coach at one point. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. yeah, for a little bit, and I think he had to go back to Cuba, and then yeah, but yeah, yeah, the yeah, kid, did, the kid's did, still boxing man. Um, did Isaac also have Angel Fernandez for a while? He did. So I think as Isaac started off very well with Angel. Mm-hmm. I'm not too sure what happened there relationship wise, but yeah. Yeah, he's not with him no more, but he's now training with my coach. My obviously my amateur coach is now a pro coach. Sick Bobby. He trains Isaac now. He's got quite a couple of fighters under his belt now. So he's doing well, man. He's doing well. So yeah, him and Isaac, very good um combination, man. So you're boxing? Yeah. I don't even know much about about your boxing really. Do you know what? What what got you into it? Do you know what it is? So I started um not properly during um secondary school so probably like 14 15 but i never took it seriously uh, my mum took me to her friend's house um friend's house her son ecuadorian um he took me to the gym and he said oh, okay you know you're really good with combinations and stuff i feel like you should stick to it and i was like okay yeah cool so, but obviously back then no one's really doing boxing like that now if you're doing boxing then you've been brought up to do boxing everyone's either playing football or rugby mm-hmm. so yeah, i did it for a bit left it and then um, probably like 16, again, picked up again. And then um, my my school took us to like a boxing gym in Kennerton. Your near, school did that? Yeah, my school, yeah. Nice. Yeah, in Kennerton near Camberwell. Mm-hmm. So had had a sparring. So obviously one of the guys has been boxing for a while, wasn't it? And he was giving it all of that. I said, so I'll knock you out, man. I lie, man. But mind you, I ain't boxed. I ain't sparred. I've only just been on pads. Uh-huh. Um, I said, yeah, I'll knock you out, man. I said, what? So we... Uh, so the school took us to like a uh, Kennerton gym and then we got in there. So I'm thinking, but back then, obviously I had no fear because I'm like, I ain't got nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. So we got in there. Mind you, he's been boxing for a while, innit? Mm-hmm. So you got in there. Bro, I gave him the work, bruv. You get me? And I was like, right, do you know what? I'm actually built for this thing, you know? I gave him the work. So yeah. it went well? It went well, bro. It mm-hmm. went well. I was knackered because I didn't know how to control my energy. I was just going in like it was a street fight. So I'm just trying to like, ha, ha, ha. bro, I was tired. But we were both tired. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if you've been boxing for a while, and we're both knackered, yeah. How many rounds did you have of him? We, I think we had about three or four, you know. What, straight off the bat? Straight off the bat. That's bro. impressive. Literally just got in there and just went at it. And obviously the coach separated us after, but it was all sick. So from then, I was like, yeah, let me try to do this every now and again. So I hopped from gym to gym, um, went to Fisher for a bit, Fisher ABC for a bit. Um, Chris Congo took me to his gym, the Lynn, in Camberwell. So I trained with Chris for a bit. And then um, then obviously went to uni. Then my uni's gym was in Hammersmith. I was training there. And then by Hammersmith- What was that like, training at uni? Do you know what? The uni, because I think that was the first year that my uni ever actually had a proper boxing. So we kind of started it off. So obviously when I went there, um, yeah, we kind of started it off. And then, so it was like, it was like a box fit thing. But back then, bro, I was weighing like, I didn't realise what weight I was. Because mm-hmm. I've never stepped on the scales like like that. Why am I stepping on the scales? I'm just going to the gym, mm-hmm. pumping weights and stuff. Bro, I was like 96 kg. 96? Bro, 96 kg, bro. How much are you now? I've been eating, in it? So I'm probably like 70-something. Mm-hmm. But, um... Wow. <laughs> 96? Was you bro, still in shape, though? Yeah, bro, because I was, I was going to the gym. So I was, bro, I think lifting 100 kg bench press was easy. Bro, I was doing, I was squatting 200 kg, deadlifting 180. So this is what, like 18? Yeah, yeah, about 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 18. impressive. So literally, you squat, yeah, squatting about, squatting about two, I was saying max was 200, deadlifting 180 max. I can do that bit in pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Half of that. <laughs> <laughs> Madness, bro. So literally, that's what I was doing. So I didn't know about the weight. So got into the boxing gym and then obviously they were doing all the weights, checking everyone. Obviously, the woman that come in with the proper weight thing, you got to hold it, it checks your visceral fat, all of that stuff. She goes, you're nice. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I don't even know what that means. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? She's like, 96. I'm like, so that's a heavyweight. I'm like, what's that? So they're telling me about heavyweight. I was like, what? I don't want to fight in that category. That's mm-hmm. nuts. So literally, because of that, I went from 96 to 75 in a few months. Yeah, bro. It was nuts. I said, I'm not boxing that. So you lost 20 kilos within bro, the... a few months, like four months. Wow. Yeah, bro. I just Five went... Five kilos a month. Bro, it was nuts. Literally, How did you do it? So just, it was nutrition. 
and just bro, just working my ass off, bruv. So mm. I stopped doing the weights for a little bit. More cardio. More cardio. Just run. I'll probably run like twice a day. Then I'm in the boxing gym. That's extra cardio. And my food was just on point. Like my food is just on point. So would you cast some point? You got on any point tips as more? so literally um on point as in my the portion sizes, I was eating more and the portion sizes were very little. Mm -hmm. So more veg. So carbs, I love carbs. So rice was literally I had like some containers that would fill up I'll fill up. Mm -hmm. Obviously my mum's made rice, I'll scoop up and like, cool, that's what I'm having. Pop it in there. More veg, more um, protein. And I was just eating consist um consistently like three, four times a day and training. So my body's just burning off everything. And yeah, I went from literally, so every week, every two weeks, I'll be checking in with the nutritionist. She goes, oh my gosh, you lost that like 3K, like what? I'm like, okay, cool, perfect. So I'm doing that every two weeks. Before you know it, I hit 75 kg. She goes, wow. But I'm not thinking, wow, I'm thinking, I just want to fight at 70 kg, bruv. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is not a wow thing for me, in it. Mm -hmm. You said 96 kg is too high, 75 will be best for you, cool. Let's you must have carried so much more power coming down from yeah, that weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, so so I think after the second month here, yeah, I went back to weights. So I was dropping weight quicker with weights as well because mm -hmm. I'm burning through the fat. That's the biggest myth. People it, leave weights thinking they, they need to yeah. lose weight by doing cardio. But. Nah, bruv. Cardio plus weights, you lose weight a lot quicker and you're strong, you still you stay stronger. Whereas I've whereas when, whenever I'm losing weight and I just do cardio, yeah, I'm always weak when I lose the weight. Mm -hmm. If I add weights to it, I keep the same strength, but I'm coming down lower and lower and lower. So yeah, so that's literally what I've done. And I hit my goal weight and then yeah, I had my first like uni, uni fight and all of that, man, but it was different. But How did that go? Bro, it was dead, bro. It was <laughs> so dead. <laughs> bro, I fought on a guy called <clears throat> Muhammad Ali, fam. <laughs> you boxed Muhammad Ali? I boxed Muhammad Ali. <laughs> my first uni fight, bro. I was like, what the Russ? But it was sick, because when I first got into the ring, this is my this is like my first ever like proper bout. So I first got into the ring, yeah, and obviously everyone's thinking, "Rob, what's he gonna do?" Kind of thing, bro. I went in there, guns blazing, bro. His co his his corner's thinking, "Crap, we're done for in it, bro." After the first round, my energy's gone, bro. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, Father God, bro, done, bro. I said, I, my coach said I went from black to white, bro. My skin just went. <laughs> Bro, I was tired. That's a Michael Nothing. Jackson thing. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. <laughs> you get me, bro? <laughs> bro, I lost all energy. The first round, they thought the guy's done for. Because, I, bro, I was, bro, every kind of combination, I put everything into that round, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second round, kaput, rap. So he he's now coming on, going ham, but I'm blocking it. And the third round was close, but I was just, you know when you're just tired, you're just throwing those dead, mm -hmm. looping, Overhand right. It's like a left. nightmare. Where yeah, you just, bro. You don't have no power. You're moving slowly. Legit, moving so slow, bro. Like, I'm thinking, bro. In my head, I'm like, bro, my hand's not going any quicker than it should be. I can see my hand moving in slow motion, bruv. <laughs> thinking, what's, what's going on? But we're both slumped. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they gave it to him on a split. And I was like, cool, it's a split. Man, are in it. You know what I'm saying? Um, what did you learn from that? I learned not to fucking, sorry, excuse my language. I learned not to bloody exert my energy in the first round, man. That's where it was. So I learned that. That was the biggest thing because I think a lot of people think you get you can get into the ring. A lot of street fighters think you can get into the ring or the or the octagon. I think think you're gonna boss it. No, street fights last twenty seconds, bro. Twenty to thirty seconds. You don't, they think it's going on for minutes, like 10, 20 minutes. Nah, it lasts for twenty to thirty seconds, and that's it. So when when they get into the ring and they try to do the same thing, you you realize shit. I got what like a minute and a half of it. What more? If not two minutes. Or so, had you had many street fights before? No, no, no. I don't. I've never really. I've never had a fight outside outside a ring. I've never had to. Mm -hmm. um, simply because I think with my guys when I'm going out, you're not gonna wanna trouble us. Or obviously now the generation now is different. Kids just running around doing madnesses. But no respect. Yeah, no respect's nothing. But if I'm out, my guys. First of all, you don't trouble anyone. But if you were to. You're not gonna want to, because obviously most of my guys they're just ma they're just massive in it. Everyone's mm. like six plus hench, so you're not gonna want to try. It. And plus we're fighters, bruv. Do you know what I'm you wouldn't know we're fighters, mm -hmm. but when you find out, it's gonna be a long day, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? But anyone that I've ever met that boxes, mm. the last thing they're ever gonna do is ever get in a fight. Yeah, it's not. It's no need. Like if if things rise, any if there's any tension, 
you can look them dead in the eye and be like, you're not worth it. Yeah, no, legit, legit, That's, bro. There's, there's no need. But then if you've got someone that hasn't got the, 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 the natural, like, mm. we get humbled, right? When yeah, you're in yeah, the gym yeah. and you're getting beat up every week, <laughs> and you, and you're sparring, and you know you got tough spars and everything. Uh, you, you know full well you're, you're down here always. Yeah. You're, hum you're, you're grounded. When someone's never had that, and, and they mm. fancy themselves, <laughs> and you know, and they've got, they've got enough likes on their Facebook comment to. <laughs> To get Larry and puff their chest out, it's it's different, isn't it? It's different, bro. It's a long day for him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like whenever I've seen actual fighters in a street fight, we can always tell he's in the gym. He's an in a gym. In my way, is boxing, MMA. You can tell by the stance, everything. And you know, I just don't waste my time on like drunk people as well. Sometimes it's been quite a few drunks that want to pick a fight. It's not, it's not worth it, bro. It's mm. like, yo. Sometimes they realise and the French are like, sorry, man, sorry, and they drag him away, but it's not worth it, man. And the thing is, I'm, with me, I have this thing of, um, one punch can kill as well. Mm -hmm. So I could be in a street fight and a guy, you know, he's drunk, he's trying to fight. I could hit him if he falls down. He might not wake up the next day. And now a life is gone. And now there's a whole thing. Your life can change with one punch. Do you know what I mean? So I try to avoid that as well because that could happen as well. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I'd rather just not put myself in that situation. If I had to, that's a different situation. Like if I'm getting jumped and that happens, fair enough. But if it's a little, you know, he's drunk, you know, people get drunk all the time. They might feel like they're big and bad. Bro, it's not worth it, man. The best thing to de-escalate a fight if you have to throw a punch is a body shot. Yeah, yeah. I think. Do you know what? I never yeah. thought about that. Yeah, just wind them. Just, yeah. They're not going to expect it. they got a, mm. a, a stomach full of beer. <laughs> like, <it's just laughs> but what if you bang them in the stomach and they projectile vomit in oh, your face, bro? Don't. Blood. <laughs> That's the way. Forget about that. So how many amateur fights have you had? I shut up. Ooh. I haven't had that many, you know. Probably 20-something. Okay. Yeah, 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 I ain't had that many. I ain't had that many. Um, I should have had way more. Mm -hmm. Should have had way more. Um, but I haven't. Um, That's so, every amateur. Bro, should have had like. I mean, I'll be chatting to guys. Yeah, they've had like fifteen in one year. I'm like fifteen in one year. I'm like what? What? Let me come to your gym. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I think with my with Hammersmith, they took long to get me fights. Um, whereas I think they were just throwing me into competitions. Like, bro, I want to have domestic fights as well, like club shows. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to, you know, develop as well. But they were just throwing me into a fight, into championships or a couple club fights here and there. And I'm like, bruv. Whereas I'll be seeing um, Repton, they just throwing their boys out there into club shows, club shows, club shows. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wish <laughs> I had that. But then again, things happen for a reason, you know. With me, um, I fight a lot better when I'm not having a lot more fights. So I feel like I'm, I've used up everything. Whereas if I haven't boxed for a while and I get into the ring, I feel good. I'm like, okay, cool. What can I do? And then I just do everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm too used to it, I get lazy. And I get a bit, you know, I'm not really in it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, and I think especially when you're, when you're in training, you're training hard all the time. Yeah. You, you stop thinking as clearly yeah. as when you're not overworked. Exactly, exactly, like exactly. You can, you can look at the game a lot easier when you're not training oh, twice a day exactly. and you can really analyze what you should be doing exactly otherwise exactly. you're in the gym and then you just get roped in the same few combo and then before you know it you're neglecting so many things that thank you thank you yeah. thank you and that's exactly why sometimes when i go into the gym sometimes i might take take a period out and not go into the gym come back and i'm refreshed so like sometimes when i'm sparring the boys they're like rah why do you why do you still have the same oomph that you had before i'm like because i'm refreshed Whereas if I if I kept on coming all the time, you might get get too used to me, and now you know what I'm gonna do. Whereas if I've come back, I've learned something new, and I'm I'm utilizing it. Do you know what I mean? And I feel good, and I can fight you, but a lot better. So yeah, man. And who's been your toughest fight in the amateurs? Toughest fight in the amateurs. Oh, um, it's one guy called Zion, Rav. Oh, he's a pro now as well. To be fair, Zion who? Zion something. Oh, I'm gonna have to show you afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, Even just the name sounds a little bro. scary. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> this was the London. I think it was the semi-finals. The Londons. Yeah, bro. He was. Do you know what? It was a fun fight. It was so lit, bro. It was so cold because we were just at it. Like, because obviously he moves a lot. Mm -hmm. I move a lot. 
So it was so sick where he had the angles. And obviously I fought twice before that. He had a buy. So I fought twice and that was his first fight. So he was fresh, ready to go. But I fought twice already, like back to back. So I'm like, cool. So got into the ring. My coach was like, yeah, cool, boom. It was such a sick fight, but obviously lost in the split. But it was, yeah, he was he was a good opponent. But I feel like if I had energy, I would have had him, bro. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But yeah, he's cold. And he's pro now as well. So I would like, I would like to actually go watch his fights. But yeah, he, he he's cold. He's cold. What did you learn from that fight? Is there anything you just could to, do differently, especially in tournaments? Because there might be some amateurs listening yeah, that are yeah, fighting yeah. three days in a row that might want to... Mm, I think just balance your food. And I think that's the main major thing because you need your energy. If you're fighting back to back here, you need to... And go to bed early, bruv. Because if you don't, when you wake up, you're going to be slumped. Mm-hmm. So yeah, go to... Just balance your food and um, eat some bananas, bro. Pause. Eat some bananas. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, because that, you know, that helps me. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, if you're definitely fight, fighting back to back, you definitely need to make sure your energy levels are up, bro. If there was a sensu bean, I could have had, I would have had a sensu bean. You gave me like Goku, mm-hmm. but unfortunately you're not. So yeah, man. <laughs> like <laughs> Alex, he's obviously, when he's struggling with his weight, mm. He can't really refuel for the next day. Yeah, so hard. So w- would you say maybe as well go in knowing that you've got yeah. enough weight to, to yeah. put on after your fight? Yeah, so what I would say is if you can do, try and be on the weight a month before fight fight day. So even if you've um, put on a kilo or two, bro, that's just water weight. You can just quickly swear it out mm-hmm. and you're good to go. But yeah, try to be on the weight like a month before. I know fighters, we're, we're not... Pros do it. Pros lose the weight maybe a week before fight day, but they can do it because they can they can hydrate, rehydrate the next day or the I night before. Out, sorry. I found out not all pros weigh in twenty four hours before, so I'm actually fight on the same day. Oh yeah, some, the IBS. What sports. on the same day? Yeah, some some sports, uh, some organizations. Yeah, MMA and boxing. Oh man, you, you can weigh in on the day sometimes. I thought that was this. I thought that was just the IBF title because I know the IBF title. You weigh in the same day and mm-hmm. fight the same day. So the weigh the night before. And on the same day, so they know you haven't hydrated to Kingdom Come. So the IBF title is probably actually a bit better for for natural yeah people yeah. at the weight. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, mum. Have, have you seen some of the weight cuts like in UFC and stuff? How much they lose? <sighs> yes, it like, is mad, bro. Like I trained with some um, Muay Thai fighters, and they lose the kilos like a week, five days before they fight. I'm like, what? So you're like five, and you lose five kilos in. Bro, that's too much. But you'd think you'd lose the energy. Um, Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler, they mm. fought last weekend. Yeah, they're yeah. lightweight. And uh, we watched the highlights yesterday in mm. the message. She was like, they're massive. And you're like, <laughs> that's, that, they're lightweight. <laughs> just, just they, they blew up so much yeah, in 24 it's hours. Mad. It's mad. It's, and especially when you've got muscle, obviously you can lose yeah. that water. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, exactly. If, if you're quite skinny build and you're already boxing it like... you. Know, you're quite slim. Mm. You're going to struggle to pluck that much weight. 100%. 100%. And I feel like that's with a lot of guys that are slim. So, do you know what? Who, who I don't know how he's a welterweight, yeah, is my boy Chris Congo, bro. Because he's, bro, he has no fat, nothing to burn, bro. Mm-hmm. And he makes weight every single time and has energy for days. I don't know how he does that. But blood, that is a mad thing, fam. But yeah, he's, he's he, I think he's boxing... He's on the Boxer Show yes. on the 17th of December. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah. sick. Have you seen the card? Yeah, it's stacked, bro. Mm-hmm. It's cold. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that, man. And did you see uh, the Chamberlain, uh, Bill Chris Smith. Smith fight? Brav. That was mental. Like, I wasn't in the country, so I couldn't go. But obviously my boys, they went and they said, yeah, the atmosphere was nuts. Like, he he's never heard so many fans for Chris, yeah? Mm-hmm. It was just like a sea of Chris Billum Smith fans. Well, it was in Bournemouth, wasn't it? Bournemouth, where, yeah, where exactly, from. exactly. So rightly so, they would come out for him. But he said it was nuts. And the fact that Isaac, Isaac, he um, blocked that all out, yeah, is amazing to me. He just mm-hmm. came in, just cool, calm, collected, done his thing. But yeah, that fight was mad. Towards the end, crazy, mm-hmm. crazy. I think that was one of the one of the fights of the year. That's in my opinion. I agree. Yeah, yeah, man. He did. Yeah, that fight was nuts. Like Billum Smith. Credit to him, man. He's he's a strong guy, bruv. You know what I'm saying? I had a nightmare watching that. We Swear. we went out. I said, oh, let's go out and watch the boxing. I remember you telling me, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't Alex do that. Alex came down, no? Uh, no, no. So I was actually with a couple mate, a couple different mates okay, okay. And, uh, and the missus. I might have had some uh, family down as well. Mm. Um, but we'd all gone out. I was like, oh, let's go watch the boxing. So yeah. I called somewhere up. 
reserve the table. Said, are you showing the undercard as well? Yeah. Will, there, will there be uh, will there be commentary? Because mm. the last thing you want to do is go to like a pub, and it's, silent. And it's all silent, and <laughs> yeah, everyone's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. you know, the, there was literally a girl next to me, like slut dropping on a chair. Just, like, it was it was pretty much a club, yeah. And I was just trying to watch the boxing. Mm. <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> it, 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 they had no commentary till the main event. What? And when it was on, mm. everyone obviously flocks over. Yeah. No one actually even cared, and you you can't even see it, man. I, I hate that. That's annoying, bruv. That's that's one of my worst, bruv. So I'd rather just you know gather the lads up. Mm -hmm. Buy the fight, get a couple of drinks, pizzas and that, and just watch it, man. You know so much saying? better, isn't it? Yeah, so, but you know what? Whenever Isaac's fight, or anyone that I know is fighting, bro, I swear on, I'm so scared, bruv. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I feel like I'm the one that's in the ring. I don't get that nervous when it's my fights, but when it's them, I'm like, oh, my chest is just, it's moving wild, bruv. Especially at that level, because yeah, at the end of the day, man. Isaac is a great fighter, yeah. but now he's mixing at the top level, yeah. like yeah. Chris Billiam Smith, for example. Mm. You're gonna be nervous. 100%. There's there's so many levels, but when you do get to the top, it's mm. it's so tough, and there's gonna be so many more critics. You're, yeah, you're yeah, in the yeah. public eye. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can't I can't even imagine what the nerves would be like. <sighs> Bro, it's nuts. But the fact, because I keep saying, yeah, see, that's a tour. That was a tour round fight. That's mad. Do you know how long tour rounds is for both of them to get to that distance, yeah. At that pace. At that pace, bro. The pace, mad. No one can ever chat crap. Mm -hmm. That's mad. Until you get into the ring, bro. Three rounds is a lot. Three, four rounds is long, even inspiring. So Im imagine a proper fight where you're boxing and you've hit the sixth, seventh round, and you still have X amount of rounds to go. It is nuts, bro. The mental, the mental state you have to be in, and the energy, physical state you have to be in, is nuts, man. You have to give credit to to both fighters, bro. Mm -hmm. It's mad, mad, mad fight. But well done to. I'm proud. Of, I'm proud of him, bro. You know what I'm saying. Proud of him. He's got he's got a lot more to come since that fight. He's like he's had a good few shouts. You know what I'm saying. So he's gonna he's got he's definitely coming back soon. And yeah, he's definitely going for the for the shot soon again, man. I'd like to see that fight again. I know mm -hmm. he's gonna he's gonna do him in, but you know, <laughs> I'd love to. You know, I'll wait. I'll have to wait and see, man. I love how a lot of the fighters now that are losing mm. that that are getting a loss in their record. Mm. It's not as scrutinized. Yes, their net worth still shooting up. Yes, Mikey losing to Virgil Ortiz Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he put yeah, on a yeah. good show. Took him the furthest good, he's yeah. ever been. He was strong though. Oh, he's just oh. yeah, bloody hell. But you're going against a guy of a hundred percent knockout ratio, Did I a golden is? boy prospect <sighs> that is huge at welterweight. You know, you're just to do what Mikey had done. Your, your network amazing, shoots bro. up, and the same with Isaac. At the mm. end of the day, for him to go through that fight with Chris Bill and Smith, mm. put on a great performance. Mm. Yeah, he lost. But now he's got so many other doors opening. So many, bro. And what people need to realise as well, with Isaac here, he hasn't had the easiest road as other boxers have had have had. So he hasn't boxed like his own he's he's now consistent. Um consistent, but yeah, so a lot of fighters have always been consist, consist, blah, consist, blah, 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 consistent consistent mm -hmm. um and active. Whereas he hasn't been not of any fault of his own, but obviously other shit that's going on in the background. But now that he is, people can actually see exactly who he is and his potential, bro. Because trust me, him in the gym is nuts. It's scary mm -hmm. to see the potential he has, bro. Why so, has he been start stop? I don't know. No, it's not. It's not because of him. It's, I think just like promotion stuff. You know, he was with um, uh, obviously other promoters before. Now he's got a very good promoter um, with Hennessy Sports and stuff. So they're really putting him on. I mean, everyone can see it. Hennessy Sports have put him obviously at the forefront, getting him fights, getting all these things for him. So that's really good for him. And obviously, the more active he is, bro, I I don't doubt he's gonna get a world title, European title, world title, whatever it is, because he's very active. Like, in, bro, he's if you see him in the gym, yeah, you're like, yeah, man, this guy, mm -hmm. he's a real. I'd dog, like you know to see him fight Lawrence Acoli again. Oh yeah, and I'd like to see it because obviously. The fight was so annoying and frustrating mm. to watch for boxing fans because Akoli just leaned on him, put his yeah, weight on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like yeah. to see both of them like a proper fight. Yeah. Actually, put on a display of boxing skills that they can both do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, think that would be a great fight. That would be sick, and that would be like a you know, like a revenge, not a revenge thing, but like it'll be. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be a massive fight. I think it will be a sold out show as well. Mm -hmm. Easy. It's just like the, obviously, I think the first fight was called Bad Blood or something, mm -hmm. whatever it was called. Yeah, but now. Yeah, man, I think it'll be another sold out, sold out um, fight, bruv. It'll be very good for both of them, to be fair. Both from London, South and East London, so it'll be sick.
I think, yeah, if Isaac gets a few more mm. few more wins under his belt, there's yeah, yeah, no yeah. reason why. Yeah. Lawrence Okoli would probably rather take that fight as well. True. Compared to some Europeans that we've never heard of that are killers. True. I feel like the way he knows Isaac's style. Yeah. And he feels I, I like it blend a bit better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, would, the unknown would, of, you know, if you, if you had to fight a Russian <laughs> in, in two months' time <laughs> and you knew nothing about him, you couldn't even pronounce his name. Yeah. Like, <laughs> for real, you know, for real. Like, uh, hey, you get a body to that now, as long, mm. as long, as long. Same, the, the Mexicans. Um, mm. Who was the guy that came over and beat Josh Warrington? Is it Lara? Yes. Because, like, yeah, there's... yeah. Bro, they're nuts, you know. Mm -hmm. Death, bro, it was their style, they just come at you. Do you know what? I boxed, I sparred um, a youth, yeah, a uh, European champ champion, Greek champion, bro. He boxed, boxed like a Mexican, bro. He's just, it's like Ivan Drago, bro. Mm -hmm. He's just <laughs> on, on you. <laughs> He's just on you. I'm like, bro, relax. He was a, I think he was a light heavy. Mm -hmm. Bro, he's just on your ass, bruv. And I'm like, shit, this is mad, bruv. And plus he's heavier. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to punch, keep him away, bro. He just, he just keeps coming. I'm like, bro, if it wasn't for stamina, I'll be done out here, bruv. Literally, I'm like, nah. So I'm, I'll leave them weights to them guys. If I was taller and bigger, mm -hmm. why not? But yeah, man. It's mad. When you started, you mm. could have been boxing because it, it's open, isn't it? Heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, it's open. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, could yeah. have been boxing the anti Joshuas and the Dillian Whites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like nah, bruv. Hey, that would have been a madness. So, madness. you had a celebrity boxing fight at the yeah. O2. Yeah, yeah. So that was so I had not, so I'm supposed to have one, um, but that was the first I got put on for the O2 one. Now just, just to see how good I am. Obviously, if I'm um, obviously to move forward and stuff, obviously, yeah, man, it was all sick. Trained for months, leading lean up into the fight, and it lasted for like 26 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what was the training like, though? Obviously, knowing that this camera's on you, it's not amateur yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You've, you've yeah, got yeah. that pressure now. It was, it was nuts. Um, I think, obviously, everyone thought I was cool and calm. I was not again because I'm thinking, bro, this cameras, there's all these things. There's an audience. Like, there's people that potentially could be watching saying, yeah, I want to fight him or, you know, potential like supporters. So it's like, cool, I can't flop. I'm all in the I'm all in the change room, like doing my thing, like everyone's watching, thinking, okay, cool, he look he's slick, he can do whatever. I'm thinking shit, right, cool. Everyone's watching me thinking I'm slick in that, but what if I fuck this up, bruv? Mm. <laughs> like, what if I'm all slick on the pads, but then I get in there and my legs are doing this, bruv. Yeah. I'm like, oh but yeah, got in there and then to be fair, the guy was like when you threw the first punch, I'm like, okay, cool, he's strong. Bro, like, okay, cool. You can tell their power from the yeah, first punch. Yeah, yeah, the first punch, I'm like, do you know what? Yeah, he's got he's got a little, he's got a sting to him. But then after that, I was like, nah, I'm not losing, bruv. Not today, bro. Not today, bruv. I'm thinking all my friends and family are here, fam. There's no way. Because I know for a fact, if I lost, yeah, like, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be sad in that, but they'll make memes out of me, innit? Mm -hmm. And I'm not about to be a meme, bruv. So I said, ban this. And then, yeah, man. One of the first 26 seconds, bro. Was, Part of your mindset was, bro, I don't want to be a meme. Bro, I kid you not. In the <laughs> ring, I'm like, I'm not trying to be a meme, innit? Yeah. That's all I was thinking. I was like, nah. Because of that, I said, I'm not losing. So how did you stop him or knock him out? Yeah, so it was a check hook. Ah, okay. Yeah, literally. And then, um, so when you went down for the first one, I think the second time they stopped it, the ref stepped in and stopped it. Because he said, as I was punching, his eyes wasn't there. So he said to look after him. The ref said, nah, I had to stop because obviously he just wasn't there, innit? Mm -hmm. So obviously, and you could tell when the ref grabbed him, he was just like yeah. slumped. Like he just wasn't- A not, good stoppage. Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah it was, I, I thought it was too quick, but mm -hmm. that's just me. But after seeing the guy, obviously he came for the medical and stuff. I was like, okay, cool, yeah. The ref made a right call because he was just not there. So was like, but for me, I'm like, I don't even know how you went down, but that's just me. But because people, people always say, you never know, you know your own strength. And if you punch something to go down, you don't think it's hard. Were they 10 ounce gloves? 12 ounce? 10. 10. Yeah, 10, 10, I believe so. That, that's that's pretty nasty anyway. Yeah, 10. Is it 10? I think it was very small, small. But for me, I don't know. I don't know what it might be like for you, but when you're punching, do you feel like you're throwing hard shots? Never. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little bit. I feel mm. like when I, when I uh, my, my lead hook yeah. is quite nice, but also I overcommit it. 
Okay. So like, okay. if I was in the amateurs and I tried to load up on a hook, yeah. I'm gonna get caught. Oh right, um, right, right, right. But most of my shots now aren't really. Okay. Um, it's just snapping them really. Like okay. if if you've got good boxing technique, yeah. and you bring it straight back to your chin, yeah. you can't really tell how much power's behind the snap. Right. Yeah. No, you, it's you're true. not on the other end of it. Um, but I spoke with Ant Lewinden and he said mm-hmm. that every shot I throw, there's always I put power into it. Oh. Okay. It's not like tap tap. So he actually so, puts power into it. Yeah. So that was right. quite that was quite nice to hear. Cause okay. You don't know that, do you? Like yeah. You're saying. Yeah, exactly, because obviously my coach is like, bro, you hit hard, yeah? I'm like, what? But for me, I'm like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about because I don't feel like I do. Mm-hmm. But when I get into the ring with, obviously, with prospects, obviously, like, very good amateurs and prospects, I'm like, bro, like, you, you hit solid. I'm like, what? For me, I don't know this. Mm-hmm. So my coach is always saying, yo, power down. I'm like, bro, I don't even know whether I'm powering up or not. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Have you ever tried loading up? Have you ever... I have. I know when I'm loading up. Yeah. And yeah. that's just like, that's when I'm like, yo, I right, calm me, calm me, like, chill. But mm-hmm. I know when I'm doing that. But that's when, if I have you in the corner on the ropes and I've planted my feet, mm-hmm. that's when I know I'm probably going, ha, like I'm going at it. But other than that, when I'm just throwing my punches, I just feel like I'm just throwing my punches, bruv. What's your favourite punch to throw? My favourite punch? The check hook, you know? Mm-hmm. I can't lie, because obviously... Um, How do you get so much power on a check hook? It's the, my body position. Mm-hmm. So literally, I plant my feet and as I throw it, so I do tend to load, don't load up, but it's a quick snap. But I do it in such a such a fast pace, it's very quick, and I just get out of the way. Because obviously, obviously, you samples do it a lot. So I'm like, nah, I need to get into into that check hook bag. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. yeah, literally. So I just plant my feet, boom, and just you know pivot out of the way. So yeah, just literally just body position positioning. Do you you land the foot after you've thrown the punch? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Sort of the transition. Nah, nah, literally, yeah. So that's what I do, bro. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, man, that and then the right. Because I've right. been I've been taught different ways of check hook, mm. and I've never really managed to get power on it. Really. Oh, for real? I, I know you can sit on it yeah. as, as you come round, but um, yeah, I've never really seen much power on them. Okay, because you're flying as you're doing it as yeah, well. Yeah. That's what. Yeah, I mean, there's there's two types of ways. Yeah, when you fly and you do it at the same time, but I feel like if you hit them in the right position, mm-hmm. they go down anyway. It depends on if they got a strong chin or not. Let's talk about that. Do you have you ever been taught like certain areas to aim for? Obviously, the temple, the jaw. Um, nah, you know. Oh, okay, that's mad. Yeah, so in, in Australia, coach mm. was just like just talking to me about basics. And man, I was like a sponge. I was like, okay, okay. Mm. So even thing, if you land flush on the jaw yeah. sideways when yeah. you when you land the hook, you want to aim for the bottom of the jaw because you want to spin it. Oh. Number one thing is you want to actually imagine when you're punching through their face, yeah. you actually want to spin their jaw. You actually want to go through it. So that way, it actually sort of disconnects them. The, the, the legs will go. It's ah, it's a good punch. I learned that myself by watching the films. Ah, okay. So literally, so I'm like, cool. If I want, if I want to land a hook on the chin, I want it to be as low as possible, mm-hmm. but just enough to just, you know, what I'm saying, because yeah. if it's right there, bro, that hurts. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't really like hitting hair or the temple because I know if it hits hair, bro, you're gonna be discombobulated, bro. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? But that's mad that they yeah. taught you that. I've and never uh, taught that. side of the side of the head. Yeah. Oh, hair. Yeah. Or well, not not the back, but, but like if, if you get caught on the side or the temple, uh, and okay. you again you're punching through the target and coming yeah. back. That's it's, it's nasty. Yeah. Okay. It is nasty. That's good to know. And obviously, like, you, you do it naturally, but yeah. some people don't punch through the target. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah that's yeah, yeah. the number one thing. You, you can't finish your punch as you mm. tap the jaw. Yeah. And come you around. have to go through mm-hmm. the target. The Cuban coaches taught me that they're very much like they're tap, tap, but when it's time to go, it's time to go. It's plant the feet, like, back, back, you have mm. to go through your target. That's why Ryan Garcia has mm. so much power because yeah. he's so quick and he can mm. punch through the target. That's mad. You, you'll see his hook. It's beautiful. That's it's beautiful. Mad. Who do you think will win? Him or Tank? So I, I, I filmed just before this my, mm. my prediction. I think everyone's written off Ryan Garcia already. Mm. I'm not going to say he's going to win. Um, I think he's going to win the early rounds because mm-hmm. he's just he's a very good boxer and yeah. he does hit hard. Yeah. Devin Haney's even said people don't credit him enough. He yeah. does hit hard. Yeah. But Javante Davis, he's got underrated boxing skills. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Ryan Garcia does leave his chin in the air after he throws his shots. He does. And for that reason, mid-rounds onwards, I think Tank will get a stoppage. It's a pretty good prediction. What about you? Fair. Tank's going to win, bruv. That's all I know, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because um, after he boxed, um, what's his face, man? Um, Leo Santa Cruz? No. Mario Barrios? Co- 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 Come? Um, Ryan Garcia boxed Come. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, bro... And, no, even Luke Campbell, he boxed Luke Campbell. Bro, yeah. he kind of exposed 
not exposed him, but show, showing a few, you know, gaps mm-hmm. between his um, chink and his armor. And I'm like, if a proper guy was to exploit that. With one punch, knock out power. <sighs> yeah, man. He's going down, bruv. And like you said, he keeps his chin high up like an amateur. So mm-hmm. it's mad. So if obviously if Tank sees that, and he's very calculated. Tank is very calculated, like he did with, um, keep forgetting his name, Roly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. That was night, crazy, wasn't it? That left hand. Bro, night, night, bro. Roly didn't know what hit him. But then when you when you look that back and you look mm. at everything Roly did wrong in that situation, he overextended, he, he had his yeah. feet together, he'd squared up. Yeah. Like he had his chin in the air, obviously. Like he had like four rookie errors Very. an amateur would never do. And mm. tank landed clean. It was clean, lights bro. out. The way he landed on the ropes as well. Oh, with the hands all hanging. <laughs> <laughs> but he actually said after he, he wants a rematch I was winning that fight this and that winning what man that man do you know what it is he probably was in terms of like punch uh, volume mm-hmm. he was but yeah man I don't think it would have lasted any, like I think he was scared as well because he was punching from far he weren't really coming up close trying to throw shots he was punching from far you know I think he was frightened a little bit he might not say it but he definitely was he's got power but power can only take you so far, innit? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're not utilising it properly, you're finished, bruv. But yeah, man. Yeah, I think the way Roly was, well, it, like all of his opponents, pe- mm. people from the outside in see someone winning the rounds, that they look a bit more active. Yeah. But you need to understand in pro boxing, it's a matter of time until Tank gets you or Canelo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Billy Joe Saunders boxed brilliantly against Canelo. Mm. And I spoke with uh, Billy Rumble, the coach, after about it. And I said, yeah, he was winning the fight. And Billy Rumble was like, hold on there. <laughs> yeah, he was winning the what, fight. What, Saunders' fight? Yeah, 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 yeah. against Canelo. It's, yeah. it's the same thing. With he this. was, to be fair. But you need to look at it in a sense of, it is 12 rounds. Yes. And you know full well that pro fighter knows what to do to get that win regardless, regardless in the mid yeah. to late rounds. Yeah. So, yeah, they're not winning the early rounds. It mm. doesn't matter. They're, they're in a 12-round fight and they know I that. that's a mentality that, yeah, that's true. That's, that's good from the coach. That was really good from the coach. You know what I mean? Because I think a lot of people like to shy away from that and, you know, try to sugarcoat it. It's true. Everyone's like, yeah, nah, he was winning. Yeah, cool. But it's the first three rounds. Mm-hmm. Bro, there's however many more left, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to think about the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, bro. That's a lot of rounds. What, 36 minutes, bro. That is long, bro. Can you imagine being heavyweight as well? Anthony Joshua, his fight with Usyk, his second fight. I thought he did brilliant. I know he lost. He did better. That was the best performance yeah. he's ever had, yeah, yeah, in yeah, my yeah. opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did a lot better, a lot better. But it's mad. You sick, do you know, to fight a boxer that can move and has unlimited energy, bro, it's, the, it's your worst, it's your worst enemy, bruv. Mm-hmm. You have to do a Nicole and just rest on him, bruv. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to win because you, you just have, you're just going to have to fight dirty. And times that Josh Joshua was doing that, he was winning. Like, he was winning the rounds when he was, you know, putting himself on him. But he knows he's not a 12-round fighter, which mm-hmm. he said. Because I think you've got to realise that when you know you don't have the stamina to compete with someone, you kind of step back. But for me, if that's the case, bro, just go hard. Mm-hmm. Like, just try and end the fight, bruv. Yeah, well, the way Chisora put it on him, that's yes. what everyone agreed. That's that's the only way to beat a yeah. skillful operator like Usyk. Yeah. But it was his head movement. AJ loaded up on certain shots. Mm. And even when Usyk had taken the body shots and you could see he was feeling yeah, it, was feeling, he, it, he was feeling yeah. it, he could still just get out of the way yeah. every single yeah. time. Yeah. And yeah. that class, he, he's once-in-a-lifetime fighter. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's a loma. Do you think he can bro. beat? Do you think he can beat Fury? Nope. No? Nope. No I was going to say that. No. Do you know what? He could make it close because he moves a lot and he throws a lot of punches, which if he starts landing and he's, he's you know, tapping, that's points. Mm-hmm. He's getting those points. So he could make it close. But I don't see him beating um, Fury because Fury is, he's abnormal. Like he, bro, like he moves, he punches. We now know he's strong because people thought he was a pillow fist a pillow fist heavyweight fighter because he never he didn't really have any much knockouts but now we know he can punch so for a fighter to be that tall has you know range and can move mm-hmm. he can bro, do it all he can do he can do everything bro Joshua couldn't do that he's tall he's got range but he couldn't move so for a fighter that they've said in the past that smaller fighters are an issue for you know AJ they are oh Takam exactly exactly you know what I'm saying we can we've seen that in the past so for that you know but for Fury 
I don't think that can trouble him. It might trouble him a little bit because if, if he wants to make it interesting by actually fighting and stuff, yeah, but, bruv, it's mad, bruv. But then also Fury's never fought a good enough boxer like Usyk. True. And a smaller fighter as well, mm -hmm. like Usyk. Mm -hmm. That's true. And also just the way he carries himself as well. Yeah. I, I think it would be interesting. I think it would be close. Well, we could, oh, definitely close. It would be very 100%. close. 100% close. I can see it going the distance, regardless of what mm. Fury does to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, would, yeah, he wouldn't yeah, be able yeah. to knock him out. Usyk's too tough. Yeah, I, f I don't think Usyk wants to go down either for his country as well, bruv. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to lose that How type crazy of... crazy is that? Yeah, bruv. I mean, if you're fighting... I remember when the fight first, I was watching it with the man them, yeah? And you used to come out with his daughter's name on his shorts. I'm like, yeah, Joshua's lost, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> if he's fighting for his country and his daughter, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he lost, he lost. Yeah, Joshua just, yeah. It's true though, isn't yeah, it? Bruv, it's yeah, true. Yeah, man. He has so much to fight for, yeah. It's either he dies in a ring. Sorry, either he wins or they both die in a ring, bruv. Mm -hmm. That's it. That mentality there, bro, he can't lose. A lot of people say that obviously the new generation of boxers, they're not cut mm. from the same different cloth as, as, as the old generation. It's yeah. true. It's true, yeah, yeah. But someone like Usyk, mm. it's not true. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's some fighters out there that, that will go out on their shield. Yeah, 100%. And That's Usyk. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. And Lomachenko's back. Hey, I'm gassed. I'm gassed. I can't wait for him to, um, you know. Get his belts back. Yeah, bruv. Literally just grab everything back, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? What, is, is Devin Haney in the same category as him? Yep. Ooh. But then also, I don't think Haney will be fighting him anytime soon. Okay, why is that? He's probably just going to duck him, to be honest. True. It's, and it's he too might tough. relinquish the... Because he might move up, innit? I think he's, he's talking about moving up in weight. So. Uh, but also Shakur Stevenson's looking at moving up. Oh, yeah. And I think he's more of a threat than Haney in some ways. Yes, he against, is. You know? Against Loma. Just because, just again, he's another southpaw. Yeah. He's smooth. Yeah. There's so many good fights to be had. Yeah. So what have you got planned this year, finishing up? Um, I'm injured, so for me, yeah, I can't. I was meant to be boxing on the 4th uh -huh. of December at the Scala in New Cross with obviously my stable mate, um, Jonathan, cold fighter. He's small, mm -hmm. bro, he's just, footwork is mad, bro. He's just always like in, out, in, out, bro. It is nuts. He gives me so much problems. How does he learn that? Oh, like It's mad. It's what, obviously our gym, we're taught more footwork than anything, can it? That's good. But he's just on it. Like, obviously, I'm footwork. I'm just all around. But he's just like the Cuban. So, like, foot forward, back, bro. It is nuts, bro. Especially how they land when they do the steps. Like, sideways, backwards, forwards. Bro. Yeah. Oh, it's mad, bro. So, me and him, we train all the time, innit? So, it's a shame that I can't train and obviously get him ready. So, but he's fighting on the 4th of December at the Scala. So, it's going to be on a four-man tournament. Four man tournament, so yeah, man, it's due to be sick. I wish I was. Oh man, I'm so pissed. But you know, it's where it's my. So yeah, I was meant to be fighting on the fourth of December, but because of injury, shoulder injury, I'm not fighting anymore. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's me relaxing. I'm gonna start eating. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Christmas now. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll eat till end of the year. Nah, nah. Do you know what? I tell a lie. I might not eat too much because obviously I think the next one's gonna be in March. So I'm gonna be on wait on wait for that. Maybe by February times. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, try to try see if I can push for, for March. I want to fight an influencer, man. So, obviously, you know, any influencers out there that think, you know, they can boss the boss, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. So, is there is there anyone in your eyes at the moment? Anyone in your oh, sight? Um, do you know what? There was one guy. He, 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 I like him. His name's Lippy. Lippy, he's from Northwest London. So he boxed on Bouncers. You know Bouncer? He had mm -hmm. like a, you know, a Wicked and Bad. So mm -hmm. he boxed on Wicked and Bad with another with a rapper um, called Taze. And obviously, um, I weren't impressed in it. I weren't impressed. Like, I've, Taze did well. Taze did, did very well. So I would like to I would like to fight Lippy still because um, when I come out of Love and the Flesh, um, obviously I put up a question time of who people wanted to see me fight. And obviously a lot of people said Lippy. Obviously, Lippy. Um, and then, so I, obviously, I added him. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, I reckon I could I could beat him. And then he said something back, um, something about it looks like everyone can be speaking on the internet nowadays. How about, he said something about, what if I move to your mum or something? Something mad, oh, okay. something mad. I was like, Rah, okay, cool. But that's, obviously, if you watch Lippy and you know how he is, that's obviously, that's just how he is. And he just, you know, he's very quick-witted. Well, that's how he got the name, I'm guessing. I mean, Lippy, yeah, <laughs> literally, bro. So literally, um, obviously, he, he probably don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, man, I would, I would like to. I would like to call to, him out. 
Bro, listen, Lippy, if you want hey, if you want smoke, I'm here, man. Lippy, if you want smoke, I'm here. Do you know what I'm saying? Listen, how much are we giving him? What, five grand? To five? If you if he wins, mm -hmm. give you like what ten grand. What, win, win, win bonus. Win, win mm, I don't think he's gonna win and I don't he's not going to win. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So if he wins, bro, I'll give him ten grand cash, bro. Ten grand cash. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. If he sees this, probably tag him. I'll put this reel up. Sweet, I'll sweet, tag sweet, him. sweet, sweet, sweet. So yeah, man. Um, apart from that, any other, obviously anyone else that wants to box, I just want, I just want to get into the ring. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If I can get into the ring, you know, have fun with it. I mean, I'm seeing the influencer space. You know, they're having fun. I would like to have fun too. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I love boxing. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to lace it up, let's go, man. Let's have fun. Well, it's been a pleasure having you yeah, on, man. mate. Thank and I'll you. catch you soon. Nice one, bro. Appreciate it.